Lost Odyssey is an exclusive Japanese role-playing game built for the Xbox 360, built for the Xbox audience, built to try and garner attention in Japan with the Xbox brand. However, Xbox gamers in America didn't support Lost Odyssey. It didn't sell well in Japan and it didn't sell well in the US. Infinite Undiscovery, Blue Dragon, these are role-playing games, Japanese-style role-playing games built specifically for the Xbox 360. Microsoft invested in Mistwalker Studio, the father of Final Fantasy, to not only garner attention in Japan, but also gauge the interest of these type of games with the audience that they were finding some success with in the United States. And these games just did not sell well at all in any region. I'm not talking to you if you played these games. The idea that, well, I played this game or I played those games doesn't mean that they were successful. If you played them and enjoyed them, fantastic. I played a few of them as well and enjoyed a few, but it doesn't mean that this particular style of game, this genre found success on the Xbox in Japan or with the audience in the States. Let's flash forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not coming to Xbox. I'm boycotting anything by Square Enix. Well, it's really an empty threat because you can't say to somebody that I didn't support anything that you did, but this current thing that you're doing, I'm not gonna support that so that you give me the things that I didn't support in the first place. It doesn't make any sense. Sure, there's an audience on Xbox that would love Final Fantasy VII. I'm one of them. But it's not enough to garner attention because historically, Japanese style role playing games just didn't find success on the Xbox platform. Now you might see some really young people or some really old people who are just really, really into social media and sounding important and getting likes and follows, but you'll hear things like, well, if Final Fantasy VII didn't sell well and that's why it's not coming, why then is Crisis Core coming? It's a good question, but it's not really a good question because if you've been around a while, you'll understand that Microsoft can't cut a check for everything to be in Game Pass. However, they can say, we'd like the prequel to that really huge role-playing game. We'd like the beginning of this world for our audience to see if they're interested, and then if they are, give them the rest of it. It's like going to see Star Wars Episode One and then saying, well, I don't wanna go see Episode One. I wanna jump into Episode Six. Give me the beginning, get an audience, support the game, and then you'll get the rest. So you can't just ignore Crisis Core and think that that's going to help because nothing ever found support to begin with on the Xbox. It's not a knock, it's a fact. There are certain genres that just do not find support on the Xbox platform. They've struggled to become a global brand, to have genres that are supported, multiple different genres. They struggled to get rid of that shooter box mentality and Crisis Core is coming. And the idea of ignoring it because you already ignored everything else that came before and somehow that's going to help you get the things that you're probably going to ignore anyway, just makes absolutely no sense. So if you have any voice whatsoever, encourage people to go out and purchase Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, and you'll get the rest of the story. I guarantee you, if it's a huge seller on the Xbox, Square is not gonna wanna leave that money on the table, but you gotta purchase the games, and this is where Game Pass and this mentality of waiting for everything and not buying everything is going to lead into another problem when it comes to getting certain games on the platform, because not everything and not everybody wants to be in a subscription service. They wanna make a game, they wanna spend money, they wanna create great worlds and great characters, and yes, they want you to purchase those games. So the idea of Crisis Core coming out and selling millions of copies on the PlayStation 5 and almost nothing on the Xbox isn't a win. It's this strange win in the world of social media video gaming, but once again, they are trying to spur interest in a genre from an audience that traditionally just does not support 
those types of games. You're getting the prequel, you're getting the beginning. It is a fantastic game, a fantastic story, worlds, and characters that lead right into Final Fantasy VII. And I promise, if Xbox gamers support this game, if they buy this game in large numbers, love it, screenshot it, send it to social media, make videos about it, build a community around it the way it's happened on the PlayStation, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, and whatever the third game is, will come to Xbox. But the idea of saying you want something, you want something, you want something, and having a history of getting that thing and not supporting it, no one is gonna pay attention to an audience like that. I'm certainly not gonna pay attention to anybody on social media who's trying to drum up some controversy for hits, subscribers, likes, to look like somebody on social media when it comes to video gaming, go out, support games, and you'll get games. You want Japanese role-playing games, you're getting one of the best, you're getting the prequel to one of the best worlds created, Final Fantasy VII. Buy it, support it, don't talk about boycotting it, and don't make an excuse when this game doesn't sell well on the Xbox that the reason it's not selling well is because Final Fantasy Remake didn't come to the Xbox because tons of other Japanese role-playing games came to the Xbox, Microsoft created their own, this is one of them Lost Odyssey, and you didn't support those either. Put your money where your mouth is or continue to value social media over games.